there's a lot of ideas under the umbrella of Neuralink. Uh, but one of them is to use electrical signals to stimulate, and then you also record, you collect electrical signals from the brain at a higher and higher resolution, and you go uh, implant surgically the methods by which you do the stimulation and the, d the data collection. So it's possible for the ideas of optogenetics to play well with this. Um, and we can even zoom out outside of just Neuralink and just the whole idea of brain computer interfaces. Well, what are your thoughts? Well, I think the engineering that they've done is actually pretty cool. So I, yeah. I like the- uh, <laughs> Robots. Yeah, from the, from the design perspective and it wasn't a it was a design approach that wasn't being taken in academia, and it's great that they did it, and I think it's it's pretty cool. Um, so I'll say that. Also, there are many ways that you can record from many thousands of neurons, um, and that's not the only way. It's a it's a very interesting way. We and others are using uh, uh, brain penetrating electrodes that actually get quite deep. The, the whole structure of the brain is very interesting. We th there's the surface cortex where it's the most recently emergent part of the brain in evolution. Uh, mammals have it, reptiles have something a little bit like it, but it's not really the, the full thing. It's a, this is a very recent thing. That's what we can access with some of these, you know, like the Neuralink approach and with some of these uh, short electrodes. This part of the brain, the cortex, is only a few millimeters thick. There's so much that's deep though, that's so important. There's the striatum, there's the thalamus. There are the parts of the brain that drive uh, motivation that drive hunger and thirst and and social interaction and parenting and and flight and fear and anxiety all these things are there's so much that's deep that these surface approaches are not getting to and so we and others are using these very long uh, electrodes that help us get deep and we can still record for many cells many thousands of cells uh, we can have multiple of these at once in the same animal and so there's a diversity of methods to get to this goal. Um, I think it's great that that people coming from you know the, the, a you know outside academia will bring uh, ideas that weren't being worked on uh, at least approaches. They may turn out to be synergistic. These things work very do work very well with optogenetics because all these electrical recording methods that's one channel of information flow. Light delivery is a separate you know more or less independent. There can be some some artifacts that happen, but if you're careful, that's another independent pathway of information flow. And we've done really uh, fun experiments in mice where we play in patterns of activity with light and we record activity from all across the brain of a mouse electrically. And so using optical and electrical together is extremely uh, powerful. So like optoelectric brain computer interfaces. Yeah, exactly. Which, by the way, there's uh, efforts on the computing side to build optoelectric uh, servers. So like where you have both electricity. So because optics is really interesting. Light is a very interesting method of communication that's, like you said, orthogonal in many ways. Yeah. It doesn't have some of the constraints of bandwidth that electricity does going through wires, but you're able to, but it's less ability to control precisely at scale. Uh, so like, there's challenges and there's benefits and having those two interplay is really, really, really fascinating. Yeah. Especially when obviously on the other side of your signal is a biological m mesh, yep. m mush, <laughs> mushy mesh. Well, the, the mushy mesh is kind of interesting because we, we have, there are problems with light, light scatters in the brain. So the, the, the photons don't just go, you know, linearly through. They, whenever they hit an interface between fat and water, lipid and water, they, they, they bounce off in different directions. And so you can come in with all the resolution you want. You could play in an incredibly detailed high resolution pattern of light, but the photons start scattering. Uh, quite quickly, and by the time you've gone a couple of millimeters deep, it, you've lost almost all that fine spatial information. So, but we've developed workarounds. The longer wavelength light you use, if you get into the infrared, there's less scattering. You can use two photon methods or three photon methods where the photons have to arrive all together at the same time. You can put in fiber optics. We developed these fiber optic methods in 2007 where you can access these deep structures with, with fiber optic methods and you can put many of these fiber optics at the same time in an animal. We've used uh, holographic methods, to, uh, 3D holograms to play in 
hundreds of individual cell sized spots of light and we can and we can change those quickly and so there are a lot of tricks a lot of interesting optics engineering that has come together with neuroscience in a pretty exciting way